already voted in the next election and don't even know it. Imagine being able to determine your likelihood of getting sick with the click of a mouse. These scenarios are possible using a technology called a GIS, or Geographic Information Systems. A GIS is a large database that can capture, store, and analyze spatial information. Using it, we can make a lot of inferences about you based on the patterns of your lifestyle, the patterns of your neighbor's lifestyle, and the patterns of your friend's lifestyle. Um, it's very interesting, and a lot of people use it. Who? One large user is the United States Census Bureau. This is a map of the state of Utah, and it was created with 2010 census population data. You can clearly see where the densities of population are located by the dark blue color. The capital, Salt Lake City, is located in the north, slightly above that red dot. That's just the population mean of the state. Now, most citizens live along the I-15 highway corridor, which runs north and south through the state. Now, although it's not pictured on this, I bet you could draw it in quite accurately by following the patterns you see of the population clusters. Maps are a great way to view things visually. GIS is also an established part of the political landscape. Politicians have found innovative ways to use it to develop new campaign strategies, target hotspots, or even learn more about their constituencies. This is a map of Maricopa County, and it's in Arizona, and it's 2012 census data. And you're looking at a region here of the greater Phoenix area. Now, there are a couple map layers that are selected. One is the congressional districts, and you can see the outline there in blue. The other one is voting districts by registered voters. And there's different shading to indicate you know, the different concentrations of voters. The, toward the top there, if you look at the red, that's 4,500 or greater. The blue, you can see the patterns there, those are fewer than 1,000. Let's look at this a different way for a minute. I'm sure you're all familiar with an Excel spreadsheet. Rows and, <laughs> rows and columns of data. You're looking at it visually here. Behind this map are rows and rows of data, some of it spatial, like latitude and longitude, in order for the software to draw the map. Now, if you were trying to determine how many registered voters were in each congressional district in the patterns of distribution, would you rather I handed you that Excel spreadsheet or the map? <laughs> this is a much better vehicle for communicating patterns of aggregated data. How else could you use this? Well, if you were going to be in charge of the next Get Out the Vote campaign, where would you likely send your workers? You might be tempted to run to those low places there in the blue, but we need to be cautious about what maps really tell us. It's only a limited view of information. It's not the whole picture. So you might run out to the blue spots and find yourself standing in the middle of an airport or a golf course or some other region that there's really, you don't have anybody to sign up. So we need to be cautious. Now, legislators can also use maps together. For example, if a legislator was looking to have a town hall on, on social security issues, he or she might want to target the senior citizens and could pull in data on this map here that shows age distribution. So it becomes very easy to see. Now, this ability for government officials to look right down into your neighborhood this, we need to be cautious here because it sets up for us to be able to use GIS for state-of-the-art gerrymandering. Now, gerrymandering is the intentional redrawing of a district for, to benefit a political party or a person, oftentimes to get more voters. 
Now, according to Benjamin Forrest, sophisticated analytic techniques and GIS technology allow us to understand and predict electoral outcomes and effects with increasing precision. Think about that. If we are able to more accurately predict election results and consequences, what does your freedom of choice really mean? Well, there's another profession that likes this ability to try to predict behavior, law enforcement. This is a crime map of an area in Salt Lake City, Utah. And you can easily see by looking at it where, where most of the crime incidences have taken place in the south area here. You can even see what kinds of crimes they are by the little icon. Now, police officials can use this to help allocate uh, resources, such as how many police officers should be on a particular shift, where they should patrol, maybe even what time they should patrol. Now, it gets really exciting, again, when we can start adding other information to this, to this map right here. What if we pulled in houses or where businesses are located to find out maybe if this is, is it residential crime? Or we can start pulling in inf um, income information from the Census Bureau, the patterns of education levels. What might start happening is we might, might start learning something very interesting about the lifestyles of the criminals themselves. It's this ability to mix different kinds of data and portray it on a map that makes it so effective for researchers. This, this map here is from the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And it shows widespread flu activity ending January 10th, 2015. Now, by the dark brown color, you can see there's lots of widespread flu activity. Maps are also effective because we can start analyzing trends over time. So we can compare it. Let's look a month ahead. Now we're into February. You can start seeing that in the Midwest of the United States, we're starting to see more localized flu activity, but it's still on the West Coast and the East Coast. Let's try one more, March. Now we notice there's very little widespread flu activity, but where do you notice it? In the Northeast. Now, given the harsh winter that we've had, I would imagine if we were to get some weather maps and overlay them and maybe start looking at them over time, it might help us determine why we still have widespread activity in the Northeast. Now, many professions use spatial technology, but I just want to cover one more, the real estate industry. Buying has become so sophisticated that you can select desired neighborhood characteristics before you even start looking for your house. These, can, these are traditional ones, you know, quality of schools, crime patterns. But now you can dig deeper and make more selections. You can include items like um, clusters of occupations, income trends. Are they going up or are they going down? ethnicities, even languages spoken in the home. But will people choose to live in diverse communities? Or will they start to self-select and want to live with neighbors who look and act a lot like them? At what point is your privacy in jeopardy? How much freedom are you willing to give up to continue to use the technologies that are able to track? You know, these are very important questions. Part of the reason why they have all this is you give away information about yourself every day. Every time you buy something and swipe a credit card or sync your technologies, you're giving it away. Now, if only the companies that were using it were the ones that were maintaining it, this wouldn't be a problem. But the ease with which vast computer networks can talk to each other, companies are buying and selling your information every single day. 
and combining it with everybody else's, trying to find social patterns. And we can get historical information and start to look at social patterns over time. How do we assure that we maintain the power of our vote or our individuality to the growing impact of GIS technology? Well, companies and governments need to remember that behind every fact and figure is a real person. And individuals, everybody here, you need to protect your personal data, you need to value your personal data. Be stingy about who gets it. And find out what everybody's doing with it. We need to remember that technology must remain a tool that benefits our, you know, benefits our lives. Because GIS technology unchecked puts us at risk of becoming a homogeneous society in which the individuality and uniqueness that we value are no longer important. Thank you.